It has nine financial instruments, financial assets, classification, initial recognition, measurement, and de-recognition. The initial recognition of financial instruments deals with the timing of the recognition of the instrument. Financial instruments are initially recognized when the entity becomes party to the contractual provisions of the instruments. Initial measurement is driven by the classification of the financial instruments. It is usually at fair value that is adjusted for transaction costs in most instances. Transaction cost is any incremental costs directly attributable to the acquisition or issue of a financial asset or liability. It excludes premiums, discounts, financing costs, internal admin and holding costs. Under financial assets, for classification purposes, we distinguish between two main measurement bases, being at fair value and at amortized cost. Under these measurement bases, we identify four financial asset categories. They are at fair value through profit or loss, at fair value through OCI for an investment in an equity instrument. At fair value through OCI for an investment in a debt instrument. And at amortized cost. These four categories will be discussed in detail each. The classification of your financial assets depends on both the following two things. The entity's business model for managing the financial asset and the contractual cash flow characteristics of the financial asset. So the first category we'll, we will look at is financial assets at amortized cost. For a financial asset to be classified into this category, both the following conditions must be met. The asset must be held within a business model whose objective is to hold the financial asset in order to collect contractual cash flows. Together with that, the contractual terms of the financial asset must give rise on specific dates to cash flows that are solely payments of principal and interest on principal amount outstanding. If this criteria is not met, you will default back and classify the instrument as at fair value through profit or loss. When the criteria has been met, the subsequent measurement of this category will be at amortized cost using the effective interest rate method. An example in this category is where you hold debentures to earn interest on those and it's held until maturity date. The next category is financial assets at fair value through OCI and specifically an investment in a debt instrument. For an instrument to be classified into this category, both the following conditions must be met. The asset must be held within a business model whose objective is achieved by both. Note the difference between the previous and this categories. To collect contractual cash flows by holding the asset and selling the financial asset. So your business model is twofold. Holding it and selling it. Together with that, the contractual terms must give rise on specific dates to cash flows that are solely payments of principal and interest. If those criteria are not met, you default back to the category at fair value through profit or loss. However, if the criteria is met, the subsequent measurement will be at fair value where you will recognize your movements through OCI. An example in this category is the benches that you hold to an interest but you also sell it before maturity date. 
For FR Code 201 purposes, you must understand this category and be able to classify something into this category. We will, however, not do any examples and calculations of this category. The third category is a financial asset at fair value through OCI, specifically an investment in an equity instrument. An entity may elect to classify an instrument into this category. That's how you get into this category. You elect this category. But it's only available on an investment in an equity instrument that is not held for trading. So you may elect, but only for specific transactions. Then all your fair value movements will be recognized through OCI. An example of this category is where you have an investment in ordinary shares for long-term purposes. If it's held for trading, short-term profit making, it may not fall into this category. Your initial measurement will be at fair value, including transaction cost at that date. Subsequent measurement would then be a fair value adjustment annually with fair value movements through OCI, excluding your transaction costs. All movements goes through OCI. So in this category, there's a new OCI item identified and all subsequent gains or losses accumulate in equity under a new column, mark to market reserve on equity instruments. Then we get to our fourth category, financial asset at fair value through profit or loss. This category is for all financial assets that does not belong in any of the other categories. That's why we first did the other three. If the instrument doesn't fall into one of the other categories with its very specific rules and criteria, it defaults into at fair value through profit or loss. Then there's also an instance where measurement into this category is mandatory. And there's a third instance where you, an entity can irrevocably designate an instrument into this category. Fair value is determined in terms of IFRS 13. All fair value adjustments in this category goes through profit or loss. And transaction cost always goes through profit or loss. In this category, it is never capitalized to the cost price of the asset. Now let's look at the instance where a financial asset is mandatory at fair value through profit or loss. This is now a subcategory of your category at fair value through profit or loss. First instance, where you have shares that is held for speculation purposes, it's held for trading, then it must be in the category at fair value through profit or loss. What is meant by held for trading? Trading means there's active and regular purchases and sales. So you have an investment in shares and there's active selling and buying, selling and buying. Then that instrument must be mandatory fair value through profit or loss. The next one is your equity instruments that you didn't elect into at fair value through OCI, the previous category. Then you have it in at fair value through profit or loss where you have a debt instrument that didn't meet the criteria, so it wasn't at amortized cost or at fair value through OCI, then it defaults back to this category at fair value through profit or loss. And all your derivatives also falls mandatory into at fair value through profit or loss. We will look at what a derivative is. A derivative financial instrument is first of all a financial instrument. It doesn't have its own value up front. It, its value changes in respect to the change in a specified underlying item. That's where the term derivative comes from. Its value is derived from an underlying item. That 
underlying item can be financial or non-financial in nature. Thirdly, a derivative financial instrument requires no or little initial net investment. And fourthly, it is settled at a future date. So a derivative financial instrument has got a very specific definition, first of all. If it meets that definition, it must be in the category at fair value through profit or loss. An example is where you have the right to ordinary shares. This will be dealt with in significant detail at a later stage, and they will be referred back to this information. Then we said under at fair value through profit or loss category, we have another instance where you designate an instrument into this category. So it's not there by default. It's not there because it's mandatory. You designate it into this category. And this would be the instance where it can actually be measured at amortized cost. But you decide not to measure it at amortized cost, so you designate it into at fair value through profit or loss. This is only, however, allowed if this designation will eliminate or significantly reduce a measurement or recognition inconsistency, which is also referred to as an accounting mismatch. This designation is irrevocable at initial measurement and cannot be changed. So in summary, my financial assets, the classification is crucial as classification determines measurement. We have our four financial assets at fair value through profit or loss, investment in equity instrument at fair value through OCI, investment in debt instrument at fair value through OCI, and at amortized cost. That is your four financial asset categories. Initial measurement is always at fair value, but please note at this point already, only the last three categories, fair value through OCI for debt and equity instrument and amortized cost, the transaction costs are capitalized. At fair value through profit or loss category, the transaction costs are not capitalized. It's also immediately recognized in profit or loss. Your subsequent measurement then depends on the category and your movement depends on the category. Let's look at financial assets derecognition. When an asset is no longer on the statement of financial position, this would happen, for instance, where you have a debenture that's matured, its maturity date is reached, or when you sell an asset, like an investment in a share, and you sell that share investment. When do we do recognize? When the contractual right to the cash flows from the asset has expired. On derecognition, the proceeds received, which is the cash, or any other financial asset received, is compared to the carrying amount of the financial instrument. This will give you a profit or loss on disposal, which is recognized in profit or loss. But an important thing to note in the standard, it says this carrying amount that you compare against the proceeds, that must first be measured at the date of disposal, meaning the fair value at disposal date. So the first thing you'll do when you sell this asset is to remeasure the carrying amount to fair value. Then do you compare it to the proceeds? Then you recognize a resultant profit or loss. So that means, and the implication is, if you sell the instrument at fair value, there will be no profit or loss. Only a fair value adjustment and no resultant profit or loss.